Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Global Citizenship. I am Ronnie Curry, Books for Youth Associate Editor at Booklist. And before we begin, I will go over some technical details. Links to today's slide presentation and title list were included in the reminder email you received from Zoom one hour ago. If you want to download them, please open that email, scroll to the bottom, and click on the links located there. You can also download the slides and title list by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. If you are in the audience, you are in listen only mode, but we do welcome any questions that you might have. So on the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question, if you need technical assistance, just click Q&A and type your message into the box that pops up. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions, and we will uh, pass along all other questions to today's panelists um, so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Finally, Booklist offers closed captioning on all of our webinars. To enable or disable captions on your screen, please look for and click the live transcript icon on the toolbar mentioned above, mentioned before. From there, you can select show or hide subtitles from the menu that appears. If you choose to enable subtitles, you can adjust the size of the captions at any time by selecting subtitle settings. So today we will have the pleasure of hearing from Danielle Presley, Marketing Coordinator at Penguin Young Readers, Mary Van Aken, Director of School and Library Marketing at Macmillan Children's Publishing Group, Stacey McAnulty, author of Our Planet, There's No Place Like Earth from Henry Holt Books for Young Readers, which is an imprint of Macmillan Children's Publishing Group. Donna Spurlock, Marketing Director at Charles Bridge. Brian Ritter, Key Account Marketing Manager at Timber Press. And finally, Lisa White, Associate Manager, Marketing and Publicity at Albert Whitman. And first up, we will hear from Danielle Presley. Danielle is a marketing coordinator on the school and library team at Penguin Young Readers. She's an avid tote bag collector and recently has gotten into the Lego Botanicals building sets. Take it away, Danielle. Thank you, Ronnie. Hi, everyone. I am Danielle, and I really sent in that point about the Lego Botanicals to shamelessly plug them because one, they're fun. They're like a fun little project. And two, if you like plants and got into gardening at the beginning of the pandemic and then realize that you don't have a green thumb, they're perfect because they don't die. Um, so anyway, to get back into what we're actually all here for, I have a few titles that best fit into our theme today of environmental awareness, sustainability, and activism. So to get started, first up is Omar Rising from Aisha Saeed who you might know as the New York Times bestselling author of Amal Unbound. Um, Amal Unbound was so beloved by young readers, educators, and librarians alike, and we're so thrilled to have a companion novel um, from Omar's point of view. So like Amal, Omar is a middle school aged kid growing up in Pakistan, and in Omar Rising, he is excited to have the opportunity via a scholarship to an elite boarding school but he starts to notice little things about how he's treated differently from the other kids. And those things become big things, those small things become big things. And he starts to realize that this class-based inequality that he's noticing isn't a mistake. It's baked into the rules and the system. And Omar decides that while he might not be able to make a change on his own um, with the other scholarship kids, if they band together, they meet maybe someone will listen. And like I said, this is truly a companion and can be read without having read Amal Unbound first. And so next up is the Young Readers edition of Fashionopolis by uh, Dana Thomas. This book is a look at fast fashion, the huge amount of clothing that gets produced um, and purchased and thrown away each year and its consequences for the people producing the clothes in unacceptable working conditions and for the environment, which bears the weight of all this extra consumption. So sustainability in fashion is already a big topic of conversation, starting from more niche interests to becoming more mainstream with YouTubers making videos of their thrifting 
or sustainably sourced hauls and hold TikTok accounts devoted to sustainable fashion. Um, this is a great book to help people make the connections around how their purchasing habits impact the world around them and bring action-based um, and uh, justice-oriented texts into curriculums. So next up, um, the next two titles are from author Padma Venkatraman, but I wanted to spend a little time on both. Um, and first we have The Bridge Home, which is, was her middle grade debut. So life is harsh on the streets of Chennai, India. So when runaway sisters Viji and Ruku arrive, their prospects look grim. And very quickly they discover how vulnerable they are in this uncaring and dangerous world. And fortunately, the girls find shelter and friendship on an abandoned bridge. And with two other homeless boys, the group forms a sort of family. And so while making a living scavenging the city's trash heaps is obviously not what they wanna be doing for the rest of their lives, the kids find plenty to laugh about and take pride in. And actually this quote from Aisha Saeed best describes the core of this book. Um, Padma shares with us an unflinching peek into, reality, into the reality millions of homeless children live every day, but also infuses her story with hope and bravery that will inspire readers and stay with them long after turning the final page. And then the next book is Born Behind Bars, which subtly ties into The Bridge Home. Um, Born Behind Bars follows Kabir, also in Chennai, India, and he begins the story behind bars with his mother, um, who was wrongfully incarcerated while pregnant with him. And all he knows is the prison and the people around him, but a new warden arrives and tells him that he's too old to stay. So released with no one to look out for him, Kabir gets into quite a few sticky situations, but with the help of another street kid, Rani, they figure out how to fend for themselves and perhaps even right the injustice that put his mother behind bar so many years ago. So my next title is The First Rule of Climate Club by Carrie Firestone. And I'm realizing that I have a lot of companion novels on my list today, but this is also one that can be read without reading the previous book. So in this middle grade follow-up to Dress Coded, an eighth grader starts a podcast on climate activism and rallies her friends to create lasting change in their local community. So when our protagonist, Mary Kate, joins a social science, a, like a special science pilot program focused on climate change, the class opens her eyes to lots of things she never noticed before about her small suburban town. So kids waste a ton of food at school without a second thought. Parents leave their cars running um, in the pickup line all the time. People buy lots of clothes that they don't really need. And the mayor isn't willing to listen um, to new ideas for fixing it all. Um, so Mary Kate and her friends have big plans to bring lasting change to their community and beyond. And this title and my next title will be out later this year in July. And so next is Thirst by Varsha Bajaj. And this is actually gonna be my last book for today. Um, it's set in Mumbai um, where millions of people live in close quarters and where freely running water is a rarity, usually only flowing a few hours each morning um, at, communal, at a communal tap. And the situation has only gotten worse with shorter monsoons and gangs of water thieves stealing this precious commodity. So meanwhile, in high rise condos where 12 year old Mimi's mom works um, as a maid, there's plenty of water and these glaring inequalities shock Mimi when she temporarily has to fill in for her mom as a, fill in as a maid for her mom. And what Minnie also discovers there is that the father of the family her mom works for is one of the so-called water mafia bosses. And so now she has to decide whether to expose him and risk her job and maybe even her life. So that is gonna be all for our Penguin titles. Um, thanks so much for being here with me and the other panelists. I hope you loved this book selection as much as I did. The PYR School and Library team has more resources on our website, such as book lists, discussion guides, author videos, um, 
Penguin, um, like our story time activities and more. So you just need to go to penguinclassroom.com or you can reach us at any of the social media handles listed here. And I hope you all stay safe and healthy until we see you again. Thank you so much, Danielle. And thank you for the Lego botanical tip. I'm gonna look into that. Next up, uh, we will hear from Mary Van Aken and Stacy McAnulty. And we will start with Mary, who is the director of the School and Library Marketing Team at Macmillan Children's Publishing Group. Take it away, Mary. Thank you, Ronnie. And it's so nice to be here with all of you today. Thank you for joining us. My recommendations today are very focused on climate change sustainability and titles that help young readers understand how we are all interconnected. Uh, according to BookScan, uh, in the past two years, the number of children's books addressing eco-anxiety has more than doubled. Uh, this is clearly a topic that is on everyone's minds as we decide how to move forward together. I'll start today with We Are Better Together. Uh, from environmentalist and best-selling author Bill McKibben comes a hopeful, inspiring picture book celebrating the power of human cooperation and the beauty of life on Earth. Bill is a founder of the environmental organization 350.org and among the first to have warned of the dangers of global warming. He is one of the most trusted and foremost authorities speaking to the issue of climate change, as well as a best-selling author uh, and the author of a weekly climate newsletter in The New Yorker. While it's important to acknowledge that we are a planet in crisis, his text and Stevie Lewis's beautiful artwork serve to inspire and, and affirm that when we work together, we can do incredible things. Stevie is really a star and with her gorgeous artwork, I think it really brings this book together. Um, and it's filled with really appealing characters uh, that make it a beautiful and uplifting read. This book is on sale April 19th. The next book is a personal favorite, The Whale Who Swam Through Time by Alex Borsma and Nick Piensen. This sweeping nonfiction picture book explores the 200 year lifespan of a bowhead whale, the changing environment that surrounds her and the role humans have played in her changing ecosystem. I have to say, looking at this topic through the eyes of a whale is just genius. I never would have thought of it. When I read it, it was the book I'd been waiting for. Uh, Nick is the curator of a fossil marine mammals at the Smithsonian Institute, uh, Inst Institutions National Museum of Natural History in Washington. And Alex Borsma is a Canadian scientific illustrator living in Chicago. Uh, and with gorgeous detailed and striking illustrations, this well-researched and thoughtfully curated nonfiction story capture the magic and beauty of the natural world, while also providing a very thoughtful account of how humans have impacted our changing e ecosystems and a call to action for protecting the environment. There's also some fantastic back matter. So it really rounds out a, a beautifully illustrated package with more information in the back. Next, Stella Diaz. Uh, if you know Stella Diaz, you know that there is no better global citizen than Stella. The, uh, by, she's a uh, star of award-winning author and illustrator Angela Dominguez's wonderful Stella Diaz chapter book series. Um, we're th thrilled to consider her, the ser continue this series this winter with a fourth installment. If you haven't picked the series up, don't wait any longer. It's based on Angela's own experiences growing up as a shy Mexican-American kid working to find her voice. The series stars Stella Diaz, who loves nothing more than the marine animals and follows her, and follows her overcoming her own fears as she becomes an eco-activist. She is infectiously charming and the book includes Spanish vocabulary and adorable black and white illustrations. Next up, Surviving the Wild, a new series launching this spring. Remy Lai has been a personal favorite author of mine ever since Pie in the Sky came out in 2019. And since then, she's continued to surprise and delight with her versatility, humor, and vibrant, accessible art. Not to mention that it's very clear that Remy is an animal lover like I am. So we're thrilled to launch her chapter book series uh, this year. Described as Planet Earth meets Narwhal and Jelly, this funny and suspenseful early reader graphic novel series features heroic animals surviving in the perilous wilderness, each based on true events. The series will launch in April with two books, Star the Elephant, in which a young pachyderm is separated from his herd and forced to survive uh, numerous perils all alone, and Rainbow the Koala, who must contend with a drought, a bushfire, and relentless bully in the form of a local kookaburra. Each book is filled with heartfelt emotion and genuine stakes for its animal protagonists, 
Plus, each one also includes facts about climate change, animals, and ecosystems, and actionable ways to protect the environment. This is the perfect series for emerging readers who love animals and adventure, and there's more to come. Sunny the Shark will be out this August. Before I introduce Consider the Octopus, I want to share a little bit about the inspiration. This is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, a collection of marine debris in the North Pacific Ocean. Also known as the Pacific Trash Vortex, this spans waters from the west coast of North America to Japan. This is the inspiration for Consider the Octopus. When chance or fate throws two 12-year-olds together aboard a scientific research ship at the edge of the garbage patch, it's not all smooth sailing. Jeremy is looking forward to spending the summer before seventh grade hanging out on the beach, but his mother, a scientist, has called for him to join her aboard a research ship where instead he'll spend his summer seasick and bored. Miles away, a 12-year-old Sydney Miller is trying to come up with an alternate activity worthy of convincing her overproductive parents that she can skip summer camp, and through a chain of errors and mistaken identity, she ends up on the journey with Jeremy. Above all, this is a heartfelt story about friendship and an empowering call to environmental protection, especially to our young people who are already stepping up to help save our oceans and our earth. Next up is Saving Earth. Uh, inspired by Nathaniel Rich's Losing Earth, a recent history, this acclaimed book grew out of an August 2018 issue of New York Times Magazine solely dedicated to it. Saving Earth tells a story of the climate change conversation from the recent past to the present day. It also wrestles with the long shadow of our failures, what might be ahead for today's generation, and crucial questions of how we understand the world we live in, and what we can, how we can work together for the outlook of the for the better. Enlivened with illustrations by Tim Foley and filled with the voices of climate activists from past and present, this book is a call to action in a riveting dramatic history. Now, before I hand it over to Stacy, I wanted to give a quick shout out to the Maker Comics series. This ultimate DIY guide series uh, provides illustrated step-by-step -step instructions to help you accomplish all kinds of maker tasks like fixing a car, bake like baking like a pro, creating a costume and more. And this latest edition coming this April is a maker comics guide to living sustainably. So without further ado, I'm excited to pass the mic to our author guest, Stacy McNulty. She is the author of over 30 books for children, notably the nonfiction picture book series, Our Universe, which includes titles, Earth, My First 4.54 Billion Years, Mars, Earthling Welcome, and Moon, Earth's Best Friend, among others. She's also the author of picture books, A Small Kindness, Beautiful, Brave, and Love, and she writes books for middle grade readers, including The Miscalculations of Lightning Girl and Millionaires for the Month. She lives in North Carolina with her family and as many dogs as she can sneak into the house. Over to you, Stacy. Thank you. Um, I'm not sharing any screens, so I don't know if I could be made your big bright center feature. Thank you. So, hi, I'm Stacy McAnulty. Um, I wrote the book, Earth, My First 4.54 Billion Years. Now, this book published back in 2017. And before that time, I never considered writing nonfiction. I had never intended to. And actually what happened is I was writing a story about a pet rock. Yep, I wrote a story about a pet rock. And I shared that story with some friends, some fellow authors. And they read it and they went, Pfft. they're like, this stinks, Stacy. You know, it's a story about a pet rock and the rock lives for thousands of years. But, you know, the children during that time are kind of dying off. A young astute reader is going to notice that, that the cave girl has gone away and that the boy in the medieval times has gone away. So we decided that was not a good story. But that idea did not go away. I realized I did not want to write about this rock. I wanted to write about the rock. And of course, I'm not talking about Dwayne Johnson. I am talking about the third rock from the sun. And that's how the book Earth was born. Working with David Litchfield and Stevie Lewis, we've created other books in the Our Universe series, Moon, Sun, Ocean, Mars. And honestly, I thought I was done with Earth. She already got her book. But I began doing research for another book, a middle grade nonfiction titled Save the People, Halting Human Extinction. 
And a third of this book was dedicated to climate change. And what I realized is that this book was intended for slightly older readers. I wanted to talk about climate change with my four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-old friends. So that's when um, I reached out to David Litchfield, who is a very busy and in-demand illustrator, and asked if he'd be interested in doing another Earth book, but not about Earth's past, but about her future. Now, David loves nature and loves our planet, and he immediately said yes. So we created our planet, there's no place like Earth. Using Earth's silly sweet voice and the beautiful almost glowing art, we dive into what makes our planet perfect and, we, and what can disrupt this balance. Of course, I wanna keep the information engaging and accessible to our young readers. And here's a sample spread from the book. Reasons I'm a perfect home planet. Besides all my oxygen, water, and ice cream, distance from the sun, an ideal 93 million miles in a zone that's not too hot and not too cold. My massive ocean absorbs extra heat, helps makes oxygen, and is very pretty. And my atmosphere, a blanket of gases that wraps me and you in a gentle hug. Hugs are nice. We also, in the book, explain the difference between climate and weather, something adults still get wrong. We mention negative effects like icebergs melting, oceans rising, floods, and heat waves. But of course, in the end, it, we end on a positive note, which in, um, includes changes we can make as individuals, some directly in the text and some in the back matter. However, since we're talking adult to adult here, we have to admit that our young readers alone cannot be responsible for the change we need to save our planet, um, we're going to have to have more government regulation, industry changes, and new technology. Giving up straws alone is not going to save our planet. Yet, yet, with all these books in the Our Universe series, I call them gateway books. I want young readers to read one of these and then run to the library and say, hey, do you have more books about Earth? Hey, do you know an internet website where I can learn about climate change? I'm very lucky. With the help of media specialists and librarians, I can connect to future scientists and future world leaders. What awesome jobs we have. This reminds me of something. Do y'all remember back the episode of Friends where Phoebe uh, sings inappropriate songs to the kids at the library? I really shouldn't sing, but one of the songs goes, the cow in the meadow goes moo, the cow in the meadow goes moo. Then the farmer hits the cow on the head and grinds him up and makes hamburger. Okay, Phoebe was out of line, of course, and it was a sitcom. And after she's forbidden from the library, the kids find her at Central Perk and one child yells, she's here, she's here, the lady who tells the truth. I love that idea. I wanna be the lady who tells kids about cool and interesting science and makes them run to the library for even more science and even more truth. I think that's the way we're really gonna affect positive change. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stacy and Mary. And Mary, I'm assuming you have nothing else to add to that. So if not, I will move on. And next up, we will hear from Donna Spurlock. Donna is the marketing director at Charles Bridge Publishing. She has been in the, biz the book business for decades, starting as a bookseller and eventually a buyer at Rizzoli Bookstore in Boston. She's one of those people who thinks the book is always better than the movie. Take it away, Donna. Thanks so much. Um, hi everyone, I'm Donna. I'm the marketing director at Charles Bridge and thank you for joining us today. I have some wonderful books coming soon from both our kids and adult imprints that will appeal to our need to be active global citizens. First up, however, is a backlist title, but worth revisiting. Um, Mimic Makers by Kristen Nordstrom and illustrated by Paul Boston. This released last July. It was just named the winner of an AAAS Subaru SBNF Prize for Excellence in Science Books. This is a fascinating book, a look at the science of biomimicry in which we learn from nature so that we can live more sustainably. Um, Kristen is a teacher at a STEM academy teaching biomimicry and introduces us to 10 contemporary scientists, engineers, and designers from around the world who imitate plants and animals to create amazing new technology. For instance, chemical engineer Yu Lin Lu studied the surface of leaves to invent a better solar cell that will hopefully someday bring cleaner energy to people around the world. 
and designer Katai Pak mimicked the way the Namibian beetle collected morning dew on its back and tipped it forward to drink. He created the dew bank bottle shaped like a beetle that can take advantage of the morning mist to collect and save water. This is life-saving technology in water-scarce environments. Back matter includes more information about the scientists highlighted, a glossary, a bibliography, an author's note, and a note on how to become a mimic maker yourself. This is a unique STEM title that brings cutting edge science into the classroom. Next is Moving Words About a Flower by debut author KC Hayes and illustrated by Barbara Chotner. This story is a concrete poem, what we call shape poems, when the words take on the shape of the thing they are describing. Now, some of us may not feel quite so poetic about the lowly dandelion, but this resilient flower survives against the odds. Our dandelion sprouts in the cracks in the sidewalk of a busy gray city. We know dandelion seeds can migrate by floating on the wind. Who hasn't wished on a dandelion full of fuzzy pappas? When those seeds break open, the taproot digs deep into the ground and it can dig deep. You can break it, but it will continue to grow. But why do we want to rid ourselves of them? They are pretty little things. They're also edible except for the stem. They're also food for many animals. The flower of the dandelion is actually several hundred flowers called florets, each containing pollen, which bees and other insects carry to other plants. So maybe there's a place for dandelions in our yards and gardens after all. Back matter includes the life cycle of dandelions and information about how dandelions fly. Next is Planting a Garden in Room 6 by Carolyn Arnold. This is the third installment in the Life Cycles in Room 6 series, in which we visit Mrs. Best's real-life kindergarten class. Her students have shown us how to hatch baby chicks and how to grow painted lady butterflies so they can pollinate our gardens and fields. Now they show us, as true stewards of our earth, how to plant our own vegetable gardens. The kids plant beans in cups to watch them sprout before transferring them to their garden boxes. Other plants, they, share, they start from seeds planted right in the ground. The children learn how to tend their garden and take joy in watching the little plants grow. They learn how to weed and thin their garden if plants get crowded and feed what they pull to their chickens so nothing goes to waste. But if there is waste, they learn how to build a compost heap. And in the end, the kids have grown a healthy, delicious salad. Rich back matter includes a glossary, guides to the edible parts of plants, useful garden tools, and a bibliography. Carolyn's vibrant photographs take us step by step through the process and bring us into Mrs. Best's classroom. And next, Honey Bee Rescue, a backyard drama by seasoned science author Lori Griffin Burns with photos by Ellen Harris Simowitz. We all know honeybees are important to our environment, and you likely know that the bee populations are challenged, and much of that is due to climate change. In this book, Lori Griffin Burns shows us the process involved with saving a particular bee colony that has built a large hive in her friend Mr. Connery's garage. As you can see, there are amazing photos of bees, hives, and their environment, and Ellen only got stung once. Mr. Connery is a beekeeper, but one of his colonies outgrew its box. They had to split into two colonies and raise a new queen. The old queen and her colony move out, and while they wait for their new hive to be built, they swarm. That's what's happening in this photo. As you can see, that's hundreds of bees. Removing that many bees can be dangerous to humans, and it can be distressing and dangerous to the colony as well. That's why we rely on professionals. And in this story, Lori follows Mr. Nelson, a beekeeper who specializes in relocating hives. Lori provides step-by-step -step instruction. On paper, surprisingly simple. Mr. Nelson vacuums the bees with his bee sucker upper, cuts the hive away from the wall, um, one comb at a time, and transfers the combs and bees to the new hive box. It's a slow, painstaking process, but the bees are safe and the colonies continue to grow, as does Mr. Connery's garden. As the process unfolds, we learn about bee, bee habits, bee behavior, and the contributions bee make, bees make to our environment. Back matter includes a glossary, an interview with Mr. Nelson, suggested further reading, and a note from Lori Griffin Burns. 
Now let's take a look at the oceans, diving deep, using machines to explore the ocean by Michelle Cristalito and illustrations by Nicole Wong. This is a companion to Michelle and Nicole's Flying Deep, Climb Inside, Deep Sea Submersible Alvin. Michelle has worked closely with the scientists at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, including going out on an expedition to research this book and talk to them about the work they do. As Michelle writes, we're wired for wonder. We delight in discovery. In this book, we go depth by depth and learn the level of expertise required and the equipment needed to explore. You and I can snorkel at the surface and see loads of amazing plants and animals that thrive underwater. It's easy if you can swim and all you need is a mask and a breathing tube. But then there's deep sea submersibles that can reach depths of more than 21,000 feet. That's deep. It's dark down there and there are creatures you would not believe. But that's not even the deepest. Challenger Deep is the deepest place on Earth at 6.8 miles. That's literally a crushing depth. But why do we do this? Because not long ago, a new species of shark was discovered. Today, researchers are exploring a lush landscape deep below Antarctic ice. And tomorrow, today's young readers may unlock more secrets of life on Earth. Back matter includes a glossary, a bibliography, an author's note, and an incredible spread illustrating the levels of depth and the equipment used to get there. And now a few books from our adult imprint Imagine, but if you have high schoolers or college students who are interested in or studying environmentalism, these are also great nonfiction to introduce to them. First is The Lost Continent, Coral Reef Conservation and Restoration in the Age of Extinction. David Alexander Baker is a film and video producer specializing in science communication for Oregon State University. His documentary, Saving Atlantis, is about the dramatic decline of global coral reef ecosystems and the impact on human populations that depend on them. This book is full of beautiful photos of coral reefs around the world. David has seen firsthand the devastation that coral reefs are facing and explains fossil fuel consumption, pollution, development, and overfishing are the major drivers of coral reef decline. In short, it's people. We are responsible. More than half of the world's coral reefs have been destroyed in the past 50 years due to these reasons as well as the climate crisis. The Lost Continent helps readers gain a deeper understanding of coral reefs and why they are vital to the health of our oceans and the survival of our planet, and highlights the incredible conservation and restoration strides being made around the world. David tells us there's a broad range of things people can do. They can eat lower on the food chain, walk and bike more, carpool, fly less, vote for candidates that take climate action seriously, run for office, donate to coral restoration and conservation foundations. They can tell stories and educate others about what corals are and why they're threatened, as he himself is doing with this book. But most important, they need to keep hope alive through their actions. And lastly, Time to Think Small, How Nimble Environmental Technologies Can Solve the Planet's Biggest Problems. Todd Myers works at the Washington Policy Center, an independent nonprofit think tank that promotes sound public policy based on free market solutions. His note about Time to Think Small, in this book, I want to alert the public to a promising new phenomenon, that environmental struggles today are increasingly won by individuals whose power is amplified by connecting to others using powerful new tools like smartphone apps and small connected personal technologies. In Todd's role as a professional environmentalist, he has had a ringside seat to how these brand new approaches are already playing a huge role in winning some of the most difficult and important environmental struggles of our day. From fighting climate change, to ensuring drinkable water for everyone, to saving endangered animals, and to keeping plastic out of the ocean. Learn how these technologies magnify and multiply the power everyone has as individuals to save our environment and how this tremendous power is not only growing, but also has the huge benefit of being independent of sudden shifts in political leadership. Thank you so much, everyone. Please visit us at charlesbridge.com slash global to find out more about these books and authors. And please feel free to reach out to me at dspurlock at charlesbridge.com. Take care. Thank you so much, Donna. Next up, we have Brian Ritter. Brian is the key account marketing manager at Timber Press, where he's worked for more than a decade. As a kid, Brian spent many hours at his local library discovering new worlds and ideas he found in books. He's grateful that such places existed for him then and now, 
and would like to give a shout out to his current local library, the central branch of the Multnomah County Library in Portland, Oregon. Thank you for joining us, Brian. The floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Timber Press has shared the wonders of the natural world for more than 40 years. And while we're known primarily for our gardening titles, Timber Press is also home to a broad range of books that celebrate the, one, the wider world and illuminate our place in it. Whether through field guides, garden memoir, popular science, or lit literary landscapes, Timber Press readers learn to forage, hike, observe, and grow with more confidence, interest, and appreciation. Many come to discover what we've known for a long time. A better understanding of the natural world is the first step in becoming a better global citizen. Today, I'd like to share some of our upcoming titles, recent releases, and regional series that, that can help your patrons do just that. As the world continues to grapple with climate change, the situation often feels hopeless. In his groundbreaking debut, Michael Meta Webster proves that hope can be found in nature itself. The natural world has a series of systems, rescue effects, that automatically activate to help organisms when their environment changes. The rescue effect details what scientists are finding as they dig deeper into how nature rescues species on its own. These rescue effects are revealed in compelling stories of species that are adapting to the changing world, including tigers in the jungles of India, chichlid fish in the great rift lakes of Africa, and mountain pygmy possums in the snowy mountaintops of southeastern Australia. Rescuing our environment is not passive, and Webster shows that it takes people working in concert with nature to reverse climate change. Combining rigorous research and gripping storytelling, the rescue effect provides the cautious optimism we need to confront our greatest challenge. And the rescue effect is a $28 hardcover that publishes in September. The loss of biodiversity is rapidly reducing the ability of the earth to maintain clean air and water and to provide food and habitat for all her creatures, including us. We must take direct action to alleviate the unjustifiable stress on the individual plants and animals and other life forms we share our planet with. But how do we do it? In We Are the Ark, award-winning garden designer Mary Reynolds provides an answer by restoring nature through acts of restorative kindness, Ark. So what is an ark? It's a restored native ecosystem and a thriving patch of native plants and creatures that have been allowed to reestablish in the earth's intelligent, successional process of natural restoration. Over time, this land becomes a habitat for pollinators and wild creatures who are in desperate need of support. Reynolds details exactly how readers can play a role in building an ark for the earth and ourselves. Whether in a home garden or a public space, readers will be inspired to take part in positive environmental change and readily equipped to do so. We Are the Ark is a $28 hardcover that publishes in October. In lakes, their birth, life, and death, readers take a deep dive into the natural history of lakes, learning what they are, how they behave, and how they function within the biosphere. Author John Richard Saylor leads an illuminating tour of the most fascinating lakes around the world, such as Lake Vostok, located more than two miles beneath the surface of Antarctica, whose water was last exposed to the atmosphere perhaps a million years ago. And Lake Bacal in southern Siberia, southern Siberia, the world's deepest and oldest lake formed by a rift in the Earth's crust. Along the way, readers learn all the many forms that lakes take, how they come to be, and how they feed and support ecosystems, and what we stand to lose when they vanish. Lakes is a 2795 hardcover that publishes in May. Trails, not scales, is the rallying cry of Summer Michaud Skog, founder of the Fat Girls Hiking Community and author of Fat Girls Hiking, an inclusive guide to getting outdoors at any size or ability. In a book brimming with heartfelt stories, practical advice, personal profiles of Fat Girls Hiking Community members, and helpful trail reviews, Michaud Skog creates space for marginalized bodies with an insistent conviction that outdoor recreation should welcome everyone. Whether you're an experienced or aspiring hiker, you'll be empowered to hit the trails and find yourself in nature. Fat Girls Hiking is a 1995 paperback and will release later this month. Inspired by a collective sense of urgency, a global movement, of plant, global movement to plant trees is gaining momentum. To move the needle, we need to act on a massive scale and plant millions of trees today to have a measurable and lasting impact on billions of lives tomorrow. And now is the time for trees. The experts at the Arbor Day Foundation will inspire readers 
to do their part by showing them everything they need to know to plant trees at home or in their community. From advice on choosing the right size and type of tree to tried and true tips for planting success. Equal parts inspiration and advocacy, now is the time for trees as a rousing call for environmental action and will help readers plant a tree today and leave their own legacy of hope. And this book is 1995 paperback and will also publish uh, later this month. You don't have to travel far to find ways of becoming better stewards of the land. At Timber Press, think global, act local is more than a bumper sticker slogan. And Grow Now by Emily Murphy is more than just a gardening book. It's a call to arms, urging gardeners to tackle climate change in their own backyards by creating climate victory gardens that attract wildlife, reduce carbon, and help rewild the land. No dig growing, composting smartly, and planting edible perennials that attract bees and butterflies are all techniques that can be used to grow positive change. Readers will also find detailed advice on increasing their nature quotient, choosing plants that cycle more carbon back into the soil, selecting a broader variety of vegetables and fruits to improve overall soil fertility, rethinking space devoted to lawns, and adding companion plants for pollinators to rewild any plot of land. Exquisitely photographed and filled with helpful lists and sidebars, Grow Now is an actionable, hopeful, and joyful roadmap for growing our way to individual climate contributions. Grow Now is a $27.95 paperback and it's available now. <clears throat> Excuse me, while our national parks may get all the attention, author Greg Peters makes the case for spreading the love to America's amazing national forests. In our national forests, stories from America's most important public lands, Peters gives an inside look at these spaces and the people committed to protecting them and ensuring access for all. From the Forest Service growing millions of seedlings in the West each year to their efforts to save the hellbender salamander in Appalachia, the story spans the breadth of the country and its diverse ecology. And people are at the center, whether the dedicated Forest Service members themselves or the everyday citizens who support and tend to the protected lands near their homes. This complete look at America's national, national forest will inspire readers to take a closer look at America's most important public lands. Is the 29 2995 hardcover and it's available now. The planetary scale of climate change often feels beyond our comprehension. In the Atlas of a Changing Climate, ecologist Brian Buma helps us envision both literally and figuratively the history, present and possible futures of the imperiled ecosystems directly influencing our lives. By presenting the forces driving Earth's changes through illuminating maps, charts and infographics, he proves the depth of our connection to the planet, revealing both the vulnerability and the hope intrinsic in that link. The Atlas of Changing Climate is a $35 hardcover and it's available now as well. And a few quick words about two of our regional series that help children discover the natural world. Handcrafted for caregivers that want to spark a love of nature, 50 Hikes with Kids, New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania highlights the most kid-friendly hikes in this area. These hikes are perfect for little legs. They are all under five miles and have an elevation gain of 900 feet or less. Every entry includes the essential details. Easy to read, trustworthy directions, a detailed map, hike length and elevation gain, bathroom access, and where to grab a bite to eat nearby. 50 Hikes with Kids, New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania is a 1995 paperback and will publish in August of this year. While 50 Hikes with Kids, Pacific Northwest, New England, and California are available now, with Colorado, Utah, and Nevada coming in 2023, and Texas, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio coming in 2024. Los Angeles may have a reputation as a concrete jungle, but in reality, it's full of amazing wildlife. You just need to know where to find it. Wild LA is a dynamic, fact-filled guide to the natural world of Los Angeles from the experts at the Natural History Museum. Equal parts natural history, field guide, and trip planner, Wild, a Wild LA has something for everyone. It looks at the factors that shape local nature, including fire, floods, and climate, and profiles over 100 local species from easy to spot squirrels and praying mantids to more elusive green sea turtles, bighorn sheep, and mountain lions. Also included are descriptions of day trips that help readers explore natural wonders on hiking trails, in public parks, and in their own backyard. Wild LA is a $24.95 paperback and is available now with Wild Miami, Philly, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, and the Wasatch Front coming in 2023. 
Okay. Well, thank you for letting uh, me share uh, some of our natural wonders, and I've included my uh, contact here information if you have any questions or would like to say hello, and uh, a couple links if you'd like to connect with uh, Timber Press. And thanks again for uh, joining us today. Thank you so much, Brian. Our final panelist today will be Lisa White. Lisa is the Associate Manager, Marketing and Publicity at Albert Whitman and Company. Always with her nose in a book as a kid, it's no surprise that she now works at AW since the first chapter book she ever read was The Boxcar Children. A former journalist, Lisa still enjoys writing, and when she isn't busy at a concert in Chicago, she loves to travel, and you can find her planning her next trip. Thank you for joining us, Lisa. Thanks so much, Ronnie. So as Ronnie said, I'm Lisa White, the Associate Manager of Marketing and Publicity at Albert Whitman and Company. Uh, next slide, please. If you're not familiar with AW, we're an independent publisher of children's books based just outside of Chicago, and we just celebrated our 103rd birthday. We publish everything from board books up to YA, including the beloved Boxcar Children's series. So when Albert Whitman was founded over a century ago, the goal was simple, make good books that kids want to read. And while we keep that tradition alive today, we also have a deeper mission. At AW, we know that when you put the right story in the right hands, it can inspire the next generation to make the future brighter for everyone. We aim to help children become global citizens, ones who seek not only to understand themselves, but also the world around them. Simply put, our books share stories that make children feel acknowledged, valued, and empowered. So I'm excited to share with you today some of our upcoming new and classic AW books that help encourage environmental awareness and inspire young readers to become active and making positive changes in the world for today and tomorrow. Next slide, please. So first up, I wanna share a few titles arriving later this year that tackle taking a closer look at a few timely topics that will continue to affect us now and in the future. So in Chocolate Chirp Cookies, William loves studying science and visiting the insect zoo, and he's always excited to learn about bugs. One day there's an exhibit about eating insects, but William isn't so sure about bugs as food. He likes looking at them and learning about them, but can he bring himself to eat insects? So the global effect the meat industry has in the environment is staggering. And while bugs have been consumed since the dawn of time by many cultures around the globe, Western cultures have still been hesitant to dig into these tasty protein alternatives. Chocolate Chirp Cookies encourages young readers to try something new and more sustainable on their plate. Chocolate Chirp Cookies arrives this September and it is also available to pre-order now. Next slide, please. So Vaccines Change the World is a new book by Jillian King Cargill. She is the founder of Northern Illinois University STEM Read and is also the host of STEM Read podcast on NPR. And it arrives this fall as well from AW. So from smallpox, smallpox to COVID-19, this book examines the history of the world's pandemics, explaining what vaccines are, why we need them, and introduces readers to the people who help save us from pandemics with vaccines. This colorful illustrated middle grade book is a definitive and timely guide to all things vaccines. So it's no doubt that vaccinations are a timely topic right now more than ever, and Vaccines Change the World will help educate kids on the long history of vaccines, but also celebrate the scientists who are making such a positive impact on our world now and in the future by protecting us with the work that they do. Vaccines Change the World arrives this October and is available to pre-order now as well. Next slide, please. In Bonnie's new old outfit, Bonnie wants the perfect first day of school outfit, but everything in her wardrobe is too big or too small or worn out. So with the help of her family and a lot of creativity, Bonnie learns to use maker techniques like embroidery, knitting, and natural dyes to turn her old clothing into something new, original, and perfect for her catwalk to the bus stop. This new picture book from the author of More Than Just a Game champions the classic eco-friendly message of reuse and recycle, and also embraces the maker culture that has become so popular, including all the sustainable fashion viral videos that are trending of people thrifting garments to rework and create new ones. The garment industry greatly contributes to climate change, and Bonnie's new old outfit gives readers an idea on how to make something old new again. Bonnie's old new outfit arrives this September, and it is also available to pre-order now. Next slide, please. So next up, we have the Boxcar Children, and they are on a mission to help endangered creatures around the world and endangered animals of the wild, a brand new miniseries from this beloved classic Alden family. In the Big Spill Rescue, when an oil spill takes place off the coast of Connecticut, the Aldens are happy to volunteer to help clean up the animals affected, including a rare species of shorebird. But could more have been done to prevent the spill? 
As the Aldens take up the case, it leads them on an adventure to help other endangered animals all around the world. And in the mystery of the spotted leopard, after helping clean up that big oil spill, the Aldens are headed to a much cooler climate where scientists are working to conserve the snow leopard population. With only hundreds left in the world, they know that each animal is important. Can they do their part to help save this elusive and important animal? So these first two books will arrive next month and then more will come in the series in the fall. Next slide, please. Spin a day in the field with scientists as they ask questions and find answers in this new series from celebrated author Sue Fleiss. The Kid Scientist series introduces readers to popular scientific careers, but also makes advanced STEM concepts easier for kids to understand. Told from a children's perspective, the series also puts a focus on, champion nat on championing natural curiosity. These first two books in the series will arrive next month, and those are astronaut or marine biologists on a dive and archaeologists on a dig. And then insect experts in the rainforest and astronauts on the space station will also arrive this fall. Next slide, please. For years, the Florida Everglades needed a voice to speak up for them. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas became that voice. In a voice for the Everglades, Marjorie's book, A River of Grass, helped the world see the irreplaceable beauty and the value of the Everglades. Marjorie's activism led to the creation of a national park and dedicated conservation efforts. And throughout her long life, she inspired countless people to use their voice to make a difference. The frank presentation of the lengthy struggle to protect the ecosystems in the Everglades shares meaningful ideals about persistence and potential payoff for, for pursuing passions, said Kirkus Review in their review of a voice for the Everglades. This inspiring true story of the woman who persistence led to the establishment of a national park is available now. Next slide. If you were a national park ranger, you'd spend every day in the most treasured places in America. You'd get to wear a special uniform, and sometimes you might even get to wear snowshoes or a life jacket. And maybe you'd track the movement of wild, wild animals. You could help scientists make discoveries, and you'd have an amazing job protecting the environment and our country's natural and historical heritage, from the wilds of Denali to the Statue of Liberty. This picture book from beloved author Catherine Steyer champions our nation's beautiful parks and their vibrant ecosystems. And it also offers a career path for readers that want to be stewards of the beautiful land the park rangers help to protect. School Library Journal called it delightful, engaging and filled with fun facts and, rec and a recommended pick for children who love nature and the outdoors. So if I were a park ranger is available in hardcover now and actually as of today, it's also available in paperback. Next slide, please. From leaves falling and becoming fertilizer to raindrops bringing plants to life in the spring, the cycle of every season has something to enjoy. While delighting in all that nature offers, we need to remember to respect and treasure the world around us. This sweet rhyming picture book follows the change in seasons and illustrates how we all could be stewards of the earth. Booklist says this love letter to our planet serves as a guide for young readers using rhyming verse to describe what the earth does for us and the ways in which we can give back. The Earth Gives More is available in hardcover, and like I said before, as of today, it is also one of the books that will be available in paperback. Next slide, please. The Big Beach Cleanup shows the impact that young people and their community can have on the environment just by making simple changes. Core is excited for a sandcastle building contest at the beach, but the contest is canceled due to all the litter. Core feels empowered to get our whole community involved to clean up the beach themselves. It'll take more than four hands to clean up this beach, but Cora is just getting started. Carcass Review called the Big Beach cleanup simple enough for preschool and kindergarten listeners, but an effective introduction to a worldwide problem. This book also includes actionable ways readers can help make an environmental impact in their own community. And also on our website, you'll find teacher guides with different projects and different things that students can do to help out their community as well. The Big Beach cleanup is available now. Next slide. When a bird flies into their window by accident, Callum and his sister Emmy learned that the, from the outside, the glass looks just like the sky. They also learned that the United States has lost a lot of birds in recent years, and that there's a lot of things their families can do to help. In this picture book from author Winnie McClure, the serious problem of bird loss across the country is highlighted by one family learning what they can do to help save the birds that visit their garden. The story includes practical advice and information on how readers can make their own yard home, and community bird friendly. Kirkus Review called it a welcome candy story about environmental activism. A Garden to Save the Birds is available now. Next slide. 
Imagine this is our nonfiction picture book collection that explores our enormous and fascinating world. Packed with interesting information alongside striking images, these titles will excite, inspire, and engage new readers. So two of the recent additions to Imagine This include The Second Life of Trees, an in-depth exploration of what happens to a tree when it decomposes and how that affects the, affects the environment, and Shipwreck Reefs, which examines how man-made artificial reefs are created and the ways in which they will help the ocean. Both of these Imagine This titles are available now. Next slide. And last but not least, we have two AW award-winning classic series that make readers think about the ever-changing world and environment around them. First up is our These Count books. Each of these picture books feature artfully crafted paper cut and digital collage illustrations matched with concisely written stories that encourage readers to go green to help make a positive impact for Mother Nature. From advocating for the ever important bees to exploring the vibrant ecosystem and the animals that call one tree their home, author Allison Fermento once again underlines the value of the learning that takes place outside the classroom, said Publisher Weekly about this series. Our These Count books are all available now. And next, last slide, please. And the last series I wanna share with you is our Wells of Knowledge collection, which features a dozen engaging and informative picture books by award-winning science author, Robert E. Wells. This series introduces readers to the basics of science and math, everything from astronomy to weather to biology and measurements. So books from the series have been named a National Science Teaching Association Children's Book Council Outstanding Science Trade Books, and also been named Booklist Top 10 Sci-Tech Books for Youth. And in the review of Polar Bear, Why Is Your World Melting? School Library Journal said, Robert Wells doesn't shy away from the frightening possible effects of global warming, floods, droughts, and increase in storm intensity. But he ends with a reassuring list of behaviors that readers can do on their own or discuss with adults. These are an excellent introduction to the topic for primary grade children. Explaining co complex concepts in a digestible manner for readers, while also, in, also offering up actionable ways to make changes, our Wells of Knowledge series is all available now. Next slide. And thanks everyone for letting me chat with you today. Uh, you can check out our full collection of books at albertwhitman.com, where you can also download our full spring 2022 catalog. You can also download our catalog and check out our current titles on Edelweiss. Um, we have some links here as well for you. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And then also just please reach out to us at marketing at albertwhitman.com if you have any questions. Thanks so much. Thank you, Lisa. And another big thank you to all of today's wonderful panelists. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit booklistonline.com slash webinars, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones like those you see here. Not yet a subscriber? Pair the print reading experience with the convenience of online access at booklistonline.com and lock in print, online, digital, and archive access by taking advantage of this webinar offer to get Booklist for $75. Patron-friendly, librarian-approved, and free with a Booklist subscription. Booklist Reader, Booklist's new digital-only magazine highlighting diverse readers' advisory recommendations for all ages, has arrived. To see and share the latest issue, visit booklistonline.com reader dash issues. Thank you again for joining us for today's webinar. One more huge thank you to our panelists and to our sponsors. Penguin Young Readers, Macmillan Children's Publishing Group, Charles Bridge, Timber Press, and Albert Whitman. This concludes today's webinar.